Challenge. We're now moving on guys to the last in the list of the submachine guns. We've actually now got to diamond camo because we've got gold camo on every single submachine gun. This is the last one in the list as I said. This is the Razorback. Wow, what a submachine gun this is. Razorback is the thumbs up for me. Number one, it was the CUDA. Okay, I did make the video on the CUDA obviously on this when I did the gold camo for that one. But I've changed my mind guys. I'm allowed to do that. Hopefully I can get away with that. But the Razorback is absolutely sensational it didn't really take me that long to get the 100 headshots and it didn't take me that long either to get the specialist challenges out of the way before i got the gold camo i would say roughly about three hours maximum guys and you can have this up to gold camo yourself some of you good player or better players out there you can probably get that in less time I did it in three hours, which is pretty good for myself, considering like nearly every single game lasts about 20 to 30 minutes, maybe some games, depending on what you're playing. But maybe three hours in total, like I said, and I got this all out of the way from no headshots to 100 headshots to then getting the final five specialist challenges out of the way in the space of about three hours, which is, I think, awesome. But wow, what a gun. Anyway, these are all the camos, guys, as you know. I'm not going to go through them. I'm not going to tell you because obviously you know by now which what each and every one is. Okay, but like I said, none of them will really cause you a problem with this Razorback. It does what it says on the tin. It is an absolute lethal weapon, and I absolutely love using it. It looks pretty mean in gold as well. I actually prefer it in gold, actually, than the diamond. The diamond is a little bit too blingy for my liking. Yes, I've had to get there because everybody wants the diamond camo, but to be honest, I think the gold camo for me personally on this specific weapon looks a little bit better. But yeah, the um, the little round bit at the back there doesn't really suit, I don't think, the diamond. Um, but I'm not going to complain, guys. Like I said, I'm happy I've got that diamond. Right, what we're going to do now, because we've now got every single submachine gun at diamond, we're going to show you the diamond camo on every single submachine gun. This is what it looks like on the Pharaoh. So as you know, the Pharaoh gun is an absolutely awesome weapon. A lot of you like this one. I've liked using it myself. But the, because it is a small, light weapon, you don't really get too much coverage of that diamond camo. But it's still there in your face, that little bit of bling nevertheless. This is the Vespa. This is what it looks like on the Vespa. Now, this is a really good looking diamond camo on the Vespa as you can see we've got a gold kind of Aztec look to it at the front of it and on the top and then at the back part of the gun we have the diamond camo that is a really nice contrast I really do like that and I think that's probably the better looking submachine gun at diamond camo so I hope you agree with that one guys then we move on to the weevil now the weevil is a really good all-round submachine gun um, probably my third preferred weapon, submachine gun. But this is what it looks like in diamond. Again, near the little laser bit down the bottom there, we have like the gold Aztec kind of look to it. And then the diamond then covers the rest of the weapon itself. So that's looked pretty good in diamond. Let's now move on to the VMP. Now the VMP, as you know, I haven't really liked this weapon as a submachine gun because the fire rate is just like a bull out of control. It's crazy. Even with the grip on, it's just, it needs more than a grip. It needs double grips, I think. It needs something to hold that baby down because the fire rate is absolutely awesome. But look at that in diamond, guys. That does look really, really nice. But um, again, I think I do prefer the gold better than the diamond for some reason. But this is the CUDA. This is my number one baby to begin with. Um, I still love it. Look at that in diamond. Looks really, really cool. But now, like I said, the Razorback is challenging that CUDA for number one spot in my eyes. But the CUDA and the Razorback, both really great submachine guns to use, guys. If you're looking for a good submachine gun. Right, but this again is the Razorback at Diamond. So what we're going to do now then guys, we're going to get you into a little bit of gameplay so you can watch. I don't want to bore you with me yapping on about the Diamond camo. You've seen enough of it now. So what I'm going to do is get us into a game. We're going into Safeguard. We're on Nuketown map, guys. Just picked at random through the mosh pit. And uh, I'm going to show you my little challenge that I do at the end, at the start, sorry, not the end, that'd be wrong, but at the start of every game where I try to get a bloodthirsty with this weapon that I've been using to get to the gold or the diamond camo, okay? So let's get this game underway, and I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to get these bloodthirsties. A lot of you do um, write me some uh, comments saying that basically, you know, you're struggling with the bloodthirsties, what's the best way to do it? I would always say run 
and gun. Don't use gung ho though on your submachine guns. You use that more for the sub uh, the shotguns, but for the submachine guns, I just use kind of the tactical mask. I'd always at the moment because I'm still doing my hero outfits, trying to get the hero gear on the special savage. I'd always use the overclock. They definitely have either Ghost in the perk one or your flat jacket. They really, really do help you. And ha definitely have fast hands on in perk two. That will help you uh, reload a little bit faster. Um, and also it will help you to aim after sprinting a little bit quicker as well. So now we're into another game there. We got that challenge out of the way first of all, guys. If you notice, we did get the bloodthirsty and we got more than that. I think we ended up six or seven kills on that first video. So we got the challenge. I'm happy. Now look at all these guys. Isn't it lovely when you, especially on Nuketown, when you get the enemy spawning like that on top of each other? It makes it so easy for us to get those kills. But even more easy to get those bloodthirsties. And you will get them really easy with this gun because it's got a really good fire rate. It's got a good damage rate as well with the statistics. So it's a really good gun as I said before. Keep playing the game as well guys. Do not camp around. I know a lot of you do camp around. That's fine. You do whatever you want in the game. But you can actually get the bloodthirsties while you're on the go. It's the best way of doing it, guys, because you're playing the game properly as well. It's nothing worse than being in a, a game where your teammates are not playing the game. They're just sitting in a room, okay? It gets annoying. Play the game as well as get your challenges out of the way. You'll get more points for it, and it makes you feel better as well. But this is a game where you've got two campers in the room. I've gone round the building because I knew damn well that they would come back again and they didn't prove me wrong. They love that room. They're always going to be there. They're making it easy for us to get our bloodthirsty. So keep looking out for that, guys. And uh, get those bloodthirsties where you can on those campers. Anyway, we're now going for another one now. There was another camper in that room there. I do remember him being there all game in that little corner there. So we're now going into the other end now, the enemy spawn where we know we're going to get some big kills because we know that's where they all are. Look at this, guys. Look how easy it is to get the blood first. We're playing the game as well. We're in hard point on this particular occasion on this video. And we just can go around all day with this gun. This Razorback, like I said, it is really, really a great gun to use. It will never let you down. If it does, you can come back to me and complain, but it never has let me down yet. I absolutely love it. And like I said, it's probably one of the quickest submachine guns that I did get to gold camo. So, you know, with that in mind, I mean, God, this has got to be number one, guys, in the submachine guns to use. Okay, look at this. I mean, I, I end up, I think I'm nearly going to get um, the Merciless if I'm not there already. We're not far away. But this is how easy it is with this Razorback submachine gun. You can do this all day. If you notice as well, it's got a massive clip. Okay, the first clip is only 30 bullets, um, but you have a massive full clip in there. You can use fast mags as well, so when them 30 bullets do go down very quickly, you can change again and instant as you can. Now, that's the points you get at the end, guys. If you notice, there, I've got loads of camos in that game, particular game. I get 5,000 XP at the end for the diamond camo, and also five. So there's like 10, 12 and a half. There's nearly 15,000 XP just in getting the camos up in one game. Awesome gun, guys. Anyway, I'm going to leave you with it. Thank you so much for watching. We've finally done the diamond cam on the submachine gun. We're now moving on to light machine guns. Take care, guys.